Hey everyone, let me start this video with some disclaimers. First, this video will focus on the psychology of the story, not the philosophy or the meaning. Second, this video will contain spoilers to the series and deal with incredibly heavy topics such as depression, abuse, and suicide. Today, we're going to dive into the psychology of Punpun Onodera, the protagonist of Ayasami Punpun or Goodnight Punpun in English. In particular, I'm going to evaluate his growth through the series and try to give you all a better understanding of him from a psychological perspective. For those of you who have not read the series, I will give you just a small breakdown. Goodnight Punpun is at its core a story of a boy called Punpun. Watch him grow from a child into an adult with deeply rooted psychological problems. But the focus is on his struggles as he passes through his life. So let's start at the beginning to figure out why Pun Pun is so tragic by the end of the series. It goes without saying that childhood is the most crucial point in our lives. Whatever happens then will influence our personality and social abilities for the rest of our lives. In the beginning of the series, we see Pun Pun is actually quite the normal child. He goes to school, talks with his friends, gets a crush on a girl, and even comes home to talk about dreams with his dad. This is a clear example of things going right for anyone in anyone's life. However, it's only a chapter later where the first of many problems start to arise. Pun Pun wakes up to his mother unconscious on the floor, seemingly being by his father. We later find out in the story that his father was actually trying to protect Pun Pun from being killed by his own mother. So the father loses custody and Pun Pun has to live with his unloving mother and his depressed uncle, Yuichi. This first issue of divorced parents is not uncommon as 53% of kids will have divorced parents by the age of 17. And in regards to Pun Pun, there are two common traits that he develops from having divorced parents. Trait number one, boys, especially if they live with their mothers, like Pun Pun, respond with more hostility to parental divorce than girls do. Now, while Pun Pun isn't a particularly aggressive boy at first, we as the audience do get some glimpses of anger or hostility as a child and especially as an adult. Take a look at these pages. After getting some news about his new family name due to the divorce, Pun Pun has a small lash out. Pun Pun ignores his uncle Yuichi calling out to him and pedals his bike quickly in anger. This is a little bit significant considering that he would always follow after his uncle Yuichi, so this symbolizes a small defiance on Pun Pun's part. So Pun Pun pedals his bike quickly in anger and sorrow. He states that he is sick of being treated as a kid and throws himself down the stairs. And after this moment, Pun Pun decides that he is going to be an adult from then on. A clear deliberate shift in mentality for a child that will clearly negatively impact him down the line. Once again, Pun Pun, while not being a particularly hostile child, we do see it develop in small ways throughout the series. Like the example I just gave and the overall distaste that he has for his mother, even on her dying bed. Trait number two. Men whose parents are divorced are inclined to be simultaneously hostile and a quote-unquote rescuer of the women who they find themselves very attracted to. This is in contrast to the cooperative partner or the affectionate partner who are more frequently found among men raised by parents in an intact marriage. Now, this trade is the one we can apply the most to Pun Pun. The relationship Pun Pun has with Aiko starts as a crush, but once they become a little more closely affiliated, Pun Pun wants to do more for her, as her hero. He tells Aiko that he will be her protector. He promises to run away to Kagoshima with her. He kills her mother for her safety, and he runs away with her. This is all clear rescuer mentality, but the real dark side is his hostility towards Aiko. Despite claiming to love her, he almost rapes her. And despite protecting her from physical abuse, he almost kills her. The next key problem in Pun Pun's life is a very consistent one, the neglect from his mother. Pun Pun's mother regretted having a child and thought it ruined her life, thought it ruined her happiness. In her mind, she wanted to be a young girl forever. We can see that Mama doesn't actually love Pun Pun but tries to at the very least acknowledge him, like in these pages here. At this point, she had come home from attempting suicide and she tried to speak with Pun Pun, but she doesn't understand how he's feeling so she lashes out in anger about it. And this is a slow burn to Pun Pun and a core problem for his future. This does consist throughout the book of her not understanding Pun Pun's emotions, so she acts out of anger. 
And without going too deep into her mentality, we can see that she still craves to be young and single, as she claims very often that if she was younger like the other women in, in the series, she would be out with all these men. Clearly, this is not someone who is meant to be a mother or that wants to be a mother in particular. So therefore, Poon Poon is at odds with this situation and he has to live with this for the rest of the story until she dies. So, to help you better understand the importance of Poon Poon's problems with his mother, let's talk about the Wire Mother experiment. The Wire Mother experiment was done with baby monkeys. These monkeys were given two surrogate mothers or two fake mama monkeys. One was made of cloth and did not provide nourishment, and the other was made of wire and provided nourishment through a bottle that was attached. The baby monkeys would always be attached to the cloth mother despite it not providing any food, and the only time that they would go to the wire monkey was when they needed the nourishment. Furthermore, the monkeys were put into a room to explore. Now, this is a test of security and attachment. When the monkeys were put in the room with their cloth mothers, who they clearly adored a lot more than their wire mothers, they would move around and explore. This is a sign of the monkeys having security, feeling secure because their mother was around. So when the cloth monkeys were removed, the baby monkeys would simply freeze up, scream, or cry. This shows that in order to explore, children must have their sense of security nearby, something that they can run back to if things negatively impact them. If we look at Pun Pun, he essentially lived his life with the wire mother, therefore living a life of freezing up and crying often, which we do see Pun Pun as kind of a crybaby and does nothing to get out and explore the world. Pun Pun does not show interest in anything. Pun Pun is a person who has never explored. He remains stuck in one idea for the rest of the story, that idea being his relationship with Aiko. So, now that I've mentioned Aiko quite a few times, let's move on and we'll see how unrequited love affected the growing Pun Pun. Normally, the romantic relationships that kids build and break down are to be good learning experiences for them. But I do believe that with everything happening to Pun Pun's family and his mindset, the relationship he starts to build with Aiko negatively impacts Pun Pun. I do believe his relationship with Aiko is the result of his childhood home life. So let me preface that Poon Poon is obviously not getting a positive social example at home and his family problems negatively impact his views in the topic of love. It is easy to see why Poon Poon takes his relationship with Aiko so deeply for so long. Let me put it into perspective for you. This right here is Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which is Maslow's theory on the stages people must achieve in life to become more whole. At the very bottom, there is the first step, which are physiological needs. This is your food, water, and shelter. A human being will seek these things out first before anything else in their life. But once a person attains that, then there are safety needs. That is having a job, good resources, etc, etc. Pun Pun as a child only needs to be in the first rung, which is physiological needs, which are met by having his house and his food and his water. Uh, but later down the line, he does get a job when he's out of his own house, so therefore he does pass into that second step of safety needs. However, both in childhood and adulthood, there is one step he cannot get to. That is step three of love and belonging, which is essentially intimacy and friendship. Pun Pun loses his friends instead of gains any, and he's never quite able to find love even with Sachi down the line. And for the hierarchy of needs, you cannot skip a step. Pun Pun never did get to esteem and self-actualization. We see that in the story. Characters constantly refer to Pun Pun as a coward, timid, and having low opinions of himself. That is to say, he never attained the intimacy he needed from a young age. He never got to that third step. This is why Pun Pun, for the entirety of the manga, is chasing Aiko. He is continuously trying to achieve that step which many find to be his problem, but think back and remember he came from a broken household. When Aiko was the only positive aspect in his life, of course he would become mentally attached to her. Aiko was the girl to give him his first kiss, and the girl he saw stars with, the girl that made him happy but he would soon disappoint several times over. And again, that is a heavy toll to him because he wants to be her hero. This is a heavy toll he carries for the rest of the manga. 
how could he get better if he couldn't find love? If he couldn't get to that third step? And how could he find love if Aiko was the only one for him and she was not around? So, let's do an overview. When Poon Poon's parents divorced and he had to stay with his mom, this caused Poon Poon to be hostile towards the divorce and left him wanting to grow into adulthood a lot faster. Poon Poon's relationships with his unloving mother caused him to be more reserved and less explorative. The divorce also caused his innocent relationship with a classmate to grow into a long-lasting obsession with Aiko. By the end of the series, we see Poon Poon has started to enjoy his future life with Aiko. Not Aiko herself, but the idea of what it could have been in the future. And after Aiko's suicide, we see that he continues his normal life. I do believe that because of everything that has happened, Poon Poon most likely has a mood disorder. Melancholic depression is characterized by losing interest and pleasure in many if not all things in your life. Poon Poon exhibits this no better than by the end of the series when he is having his time with Aiko. And we as the audience see that he finds no pleasure in anything, not the small talks with Aiko, not the traveling with Aiko, and certainly not Aiko herself. Hey, you've made it to the end of the video. Subscribe to my channel if you want more characters psychologically analyzed and leave me a comment on who you want to see next.